Hey, 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 what's up, what's up? Welcome to Kodansha Live. My name is Misaki Kido and I am host of the show where we talk about all things related to Kodansha manga. And uh, today uh, we are having a total, uh, Tokyo Revenger special. Yay! I think that is one of the, everyone's like favorite series this summer. And um, also, um, I'm a huge fan of it myself. I'm super hyped about the manga and anime becoming such a big hit. Um, so I can't, I'm dying to talk about it. Um, um, I hope you get to stick around because um, we actually got a chance to talk to Ken Wakui Sensei, the creator of um, Tokyo Revengers, about the series. So, um, oh, and on top of it, uh, he answered some of the questions that was submitted from the fans as well. So, you know, I hope you stick around to the end to watch everything with us. Um, cool. Uh, let's see, before we get started on that, um, I have some new announcements um, on the digital debut series that's coming out from... Um, Kodansha in September 2021. There are pretty interesting series out there so uh, coming out so um, let's take a look. Uh, first up is uh, it's called Sweet Sweet Revenge. Um, this is um, a shoujo manga by Shushushu Sakurai. <laughs> Funny name. Um, this is um, this one is definitely about the revenge, another revenge story. It's about uh, her revenge. Um, she is a transfer student who came into a school where there's like uh, a group of guys who are like incredibly good looking and incredibly like mean, um, who are just like totally like in control of this like um, school. And uh, this transfer student seems to be up to something to, uh, against them. Um, there's a scene where this kind of gives me a chill. Like this, one of the guy comes up to her and say that you know, like you shouldn't really be at this rooftop because like somebody jumped from here. And like she's like, oh yeah, like what happened to her? And she, he's like, well, no one really knows, but the rumor says she's she's dead. Um, but like in her mind, she knows that that he is actually talking about her. But uh, she is so unrecognizable from back in the days. Um, <laughs> that's uh, before and after shot right there of her uh, uh, in the um, earlier days before uh, she moved away. Um, she was bullied from these like five guys because of her appearance. And now that she's been gone for some time, that she came back for uh, her run of revenge. Um, especially that guy who um, was always just only watching and not helping her in the situation. And uh, she's, she's like kind of kind of brutal how she gets back to them too. Um, she hires like these ninjas <laughs> to find out anything, any dirt about these five guys um, that he, she can use against to, you know, blackmail them. And she ends up, like, um, doing everything they, she can to, like, ruin their reputation, <laughs> let's just say. Uh, total savage. Um, yeah, so that's uh, Sweet Sweet Revenge. Um, shoujo manga with a hint of Kill Bill. Um, <laughs> uh, coming up in September 7th. Next up is... Um, turns out my online friend is my real life boss. Um, now that sounds like a um, horror movie or something. <laughs> Terrifying. Uh, this one is really cute. Um, I'll show you some pages from it too. So it's it's uh, it starts out with this guy who's getting like his plan rejected at his work, and uh, he goes home to bent online uh, where he plays games uh, with his online buddies, and he's like, uh, I hate my work, I hate my boss, yada yada, and the other guy's just kind of listening to him like bent and stuff, um, and then you know he. He's, He's like, says stuff like, you know, I wish I was working at the same place as you. Um, little only know that it's actually his own direct boss who rejected his plan earlier. 
um, who he's talking to, but they have like no idea, right? Um, and then like, you know, it's like, oh yeah, like I kind of have like some rough day at work too. Like, you know, there's this guy who tries really hard, but he like, he never really gets anywhere like thinking about the subordinate. And he goes, oh yeah, yeah, you know, there's always guys like that. <laughs> Little knows that uh, he, he was talking about him. Um, so they're like, kind of like, Am I flirty with each other? Uh, along with like kind of flirting with the idea of like meeting up like um, in person, um, like uh, while they're sitting next to each other. <laughs> uh, so like how they meet up and um, what happens is, uh, as you can imagine, is awkwardly, uh, awfully painful and hilarious. So I hope you check out that uh, turns out my online friend is my real life boss. Okay. Um, oops, sorry. Next one up is, uh, we're all not on from here. This is a, actually a, a BL series, um, like a slice of life, like a really chill one um, about these like two guys who goes to like high school together um one guy seems to have a uh, feeling towards another one sort of but like, he's like kind of okay with just being friends and all until like this like one day like his friend comes up with like some like cookies saying that like some girls approaching him and gave him these like cookies and stuff and um he's just asking like, are you thinking about going out with her? Um, and like, I'm not sure. That it, he goes like, I'm not really sure, but she's she's a lot like you. Um, oops, sorry. And then, um, like, what do you mean, like, a lot like him? And it's just like, you know, it's like their vibe is so similar that I could probably end up like, you know, working out pretty well. And as soon as he heard that, like, he couldn't like stop himself but just like kissing the other guy um and, like just like spilling out his feeling right on the spot but like his his friends seem to be taking it pretty pretty good i guess um even though like just like feeling really terrible about it uh just when he thought everything was over like this is done deal um yeah guess what he suggests like why don't we like start dating each other so um this is actually like a, a beginning of their relationship it's pretty cool um so that's we're on our own from here uh by you machio uh streets on september 14th cool and uh next one up uh, you're my cutie. Um, the cutie is the guy here. <laughs> this one is uh, about a girl named Madoka who loves shoujo manga so much so that she uh, she loves pretty men who looks like he's straight out of shoujo manga. Like she's like always like kind of fantasizing about like that kind of like you know. Um, guys being around her but like uh, not much chances comes around because she's like kind of busy working for her um family owned like restaurant so like you know outside from school work she's like constantly working at this restaurant until like one day like she bumps into this guy who's, who looks pretty and um yeah she straight up says that he has a really pretty face but like the guys like you just did that you just bumped into me on purpose he's like super just straight up rude guy <laughs> and uh but not only that he's like straight up rude guy like he's actually the the new part-timer who starts to work at her um family-owned restaurant um this is pretty pretty awkward um but uh you know, like, uh, when once they start to get to know each other, they actually, like, mm, they seem to be mm, not so bad with each other. And, like, the guys also doesn't seem to be so bad after all. In fact, um, he happens to be very cute, I mean, uh, to her anyway. So she's, like, freaking out here a little bit. So that is the, uh, you're my cutie. Um, that is... 
coming up on September 21. Yeah. And one more. Here's the, the girl, the shovel, and the evil eye. This is um, a isekai, new isekai series. Um, and just like uh, a very traditional um, uh, isekai series, um, it starts out with the main character dying like a really horrible death. Like he got into a box, bus accident. Like, and uh, some, some dude is just like taking, taking picture of him and stuff. So he's just like look really pissed here. Like he's like holding a grudge against this guy who took, how dare you take my picture. Um, but like next moment he's like kind of consciousness phase and wakes up in this like crazy cave that looks like uh, just doesn't look like where he was just until now like in fact like everybody looks and like looks like they're from a different country they're speaking in another language but like but how come he can like understand it totally it's like very strange to him and uh, this miner seems to be uh, working on like getting these like um, gems in this cave um, and when he uh, when he goes outside of the, the cave he realizes that like it's kind of in this like area that looks like medieval time um, and then that's when he actually bumps into his new um, mining partner I should say um, because it, um, yeah, she has this like incredible talent to um, scope out where the gems are uh, in these mines, and she almost like every single time hits like the jackpot. So this is like how uh, this guy who was suddenly transported into this world could make a living off of the situation. So he decides to team up with her. Um, what what is up with the um, the evil eye? Um, that's something that you might want to continue to read yourself and to find out. Um, that's coming out in, uh, on September 28th. Check it out. So that's the, all the digital debuts that's coming out in September. Um, some of them, the chapter, pre uh, chapter 1 previews are already up on uh, kodansha.us. Um, you can also uh, go to your um, your favorite digital retailers and pre-order them um, ahead of time. So that by, by the time that it comes out the street day, uh, you have it right in your account. So um, I hope to check them out. Oh, uh, so there's actually another deal that I wanted to tell you about. Um, and that is... Yeah, humble bundle. So right now, there's we're in like the the final twelfth hour of um, humble bundle, uh, isekai bundle from Kolansha. Um, um, as you can see, that uh, we have been publishing uh, quite a few of like really good isekai manga uh, series. Um, some of my favorites in here is like Shangri-La Frontier. Um, the, the, I guess I became the mother of the great demon king's ten children in another world. Uh, that is uh, actually an isekai work by Emma Toyama. Um, that's like if you haven't checked it out, it's totally worth looking into. Um, uh, so there's like, uh, yeah, quite a bunch of series. There's like kind of really funny ones like the the night orc uh the night cartoonist and her orc editor uh just you know if, you, if you're curious you might want to take a look um the, the, that time i got incarnated as a slime trinity trinity in tempest okay cool that's a spin-off um, slime series um this one's also my favorite i'm standing on the million lives uh, pretty pretty hardcore um, like really good isekai plots right there so um, yeah this like the good thing about humble bundle is that you know when you, you pay pretty much whatever that you can afford and willing to pay for this bundle like um, some of the money will go to uh, charity as well so um, you yeah it'll be like benefiting um, not just the manga, but uh, uh, manga and manga creators, but the uh, we're also the, also 
donating to the the book industry charitable foundation so um yeah be sure to check it out because it's like a pretty pretty darn good deal last 12 hours okay um so as i promised um we got tokyo revengers special yay um i hope you're ready because i am super excited about that series and i'm like dying to know a lot whole lot more about the series as well as the creators so I am super stoked to tell you that we got an exclusive interview with the creator Ken Wakui on uh, uh, about Tokyo Revengers today. And for those of you who are here today, you're the first ones to get to look at it too. Yay! So I hope you are ready. Okay, ready. Let's go. If you could go back in time, what would you do or what might you undo? Maybe there's a point in your life where you wish you made a better choice or told somebody how you really felt or simply just stood up for yourself. Time travel as a trope has been around maybe forever in the world of storytelling, likely because the underlying feelings are so relatable to many of us. But what if we really want to see what else could be done in a time travel story? Well, there's a hit video manga on the rise which takes time travel to a whole new level by infusing it with an epic battles of the urban outlaws in Japan, and it's called Tokyo Revengers. But what is Furio Manga, you say? Here's a little explainer, followed by an exclusive interview with the creative mind behind Tokyo Revengers, Ken Wakui. Furio Manga or the outlaw manga has become a prominent manga genre in Japan since the late 60s and that peaked in the 90s. The stories in the manga follows the lives of these delinquents who lives outside of the mainstream Japanese society, and they all have different reasons for doing so, which makes them such compelling life-size heroes. As is characteristic of the genre, the main character often has a unique badass quality or sometimes a lack of their own. Their friends are badasses and they're constantly getting into fights with even more badasses. Because they are the outlaws, they have their own ways of doing things. They've developed their own philosophies, unwritten laws, and of course, street fashion. But Furio Manga hasn't quite taken off into a global phenomenon like the other genres of manga, science fiction, romantic comedy, or action fantasy, until Tokyo Revenger came along. The main character, Takemichi, was sort of this wannabe badass back in the day, but at some point, he even gave up on being the man who he wanted to be. Now that he's an older and hopefully more mature, he gets a chance to go back into time to alter his fate, that of his loved ones, and even the final outcome of the biggest gang war in Tokyo. But could he really make things right this time? Well, not so easily. Hi there! Thank you for taking your time to talk to us today. So I just want to say that the storyline of Tokyo Revenger is just so amazing. Thank you. Do you remember how you came up with the story of Tokyo Revengers? When I was talking to the editor, he asked me if I'd be interested in working on a furyo manga. He said, not only a furyo manga, but something with a more universal appeal. From that conversation, I came up with the story of Tokyo Revengers. I'm curious, why did you just set the story in Tokyo in 2005? It seems so specific. The lives of the outlaws change over time. By the time I started this manga in 2017, I didn't even know what was going on in that scene, so I decided to set the story in the era that I'm more familiar with. We set the time in 2005 because that's when one of the editors that I work with was in second year in junior high, which is the same age as the main character Takimichi. That way, it was easier for me to identify with the time. Could you tell us how you come up with your characters? 
They feel like real people to me. I come up with their looks first. Then their personality comes in when I start to move them around in the story. Which character do you personally relate to the most? And could you tell us why? Uh, all of them. I just can't pick one. So I cry when the characters cry in the manga. Do you cry too? All the time. When I'm drawing a crying face, I'm always crying. Your art style is definitely very unique. And I'm wondering, who are your creative influences? I have many influences. Originally, I looked up to the art style of Takihiko Inoue and Katsuhiro Otomo and used their works as reference. When I started to work on the shonen manga, I was going for the style of Akira Toriyama and Juzo Tokoro. For more contemporary work, I like the art of Haruichi Furudate and color illustrations by Tsui Ishida. Do you use digital or traditional medium to draw manga? For all the black and white arts, I use traditional mediums. For color illustrations, I started to use digital tools, beginning with this series. Your stories sometimes feel like a movie to me. Do you happen to like movies? I love movies. My favorites are The Godfather and Braveheart. Speaking of movies, your manga is now adapted into a movie, in an anime. What does it feel like for you? I'm super happy. I'm so grateful to see the world of Tokyo Revengers expanding. I think we all want to know this, but do you have an ending in mind for Tokyo Revengers? And anything you can tell us now? I have an ending in mind for quite some time now, but I can't tell you yet. Finally, do you have any comments to the Tokyo Revengers fan all over the world? I never dreamed my manga about delinquents and biker gangs would reach fans all over the world, so I am pleasantly surprised. I hope you continue to enjoy Tokyo Revengers. Thank you, Wakui Sensei! such hype i hope you liked it too uh because i loved it <laughs> uh that's another cool thing about it is that when we asked him to do the interview uh he also opened up the q a's to the, the fans as well and uh although he couldn't get to like everybody's question uh he got to see you know like all the questions that were submitted from y'all so that's just letting you know um so for those lucky fans um who submitted their questions um we're gonna go through um some of them and i hope you find your names in here too um and uh first up is um from bobby uh he said i also want to be a manga creator so where and when did you get your inspiration to create this manga and please give us tips and advice i think that's a pretty good question uh wakui sensei says prior to becoming a mangaka i read a manga at the ramen shop called called hatarakiman by moyoko Anno. that's um the wife of director Anno. um at that time i was going through a hard time with my career and the manga really resonated with me. And if you, uh, if I were to give you an advice on becoming a mangaka, I would suggest that you just draw a manga and show it to another people. Um, very good advice. Uh, next one uh, is from Dao Gyahan. Uh, which character do you find the most fun when drawing? Makui Sensei says, um, I'll say Mikey. When he appears in a manga, I always want to live, uh, live up to the expectation of the fans. Uh, so I hype myself up to draw him, um, even all the way to the tip of his hair. <laughs> and that's kind of fun. Cool. Um, next up is uh, Eddie says, 
Uh, what or who is the inspiration behind Takemichi or Cry Baby Hero? Um, Mokui Sensei responded, uh, It all started when I was working on the rooftop scene with Atsushi. I thought of it as something that Atsushi would call Takemichi. Originally, I had that scene in mind and was going to execute that event across three chapters. But there was a whole lot more that I wanted to draw leading up to this scene, so I came towards the end of the event. Um, thank you for talking without a spoiler, but if you're curious, um, it's time to get into Tokyo Revengers. <laughs> Alright, next one up. Uh, Emma W. Hart says, Is there a specific way that you choose the names for your characters? For example, how they sound or the meaning and can you give an example from Tokyo Revengers P.S. very happy you named the character Emma yay uh, Wakui sensei responded um, I like very unique names so I pay attention to people's names all the time but when it comes to naming my own characters um, I don't really have a strong preferences uh, in the case of Ken Duguji, uh, I thought of his nickname Doraken first, then thought of a last name that started with the kanji dragon. Some people have the last name Jinguji, so I thought, hey, Duguji might work. <laughs> cool. The next up is a question from Kei Kobayashi. Uh, what is your favorite Tokyo Revengers volumes? Um, yeah, good question. Um, Wakui Sensei said, I always like the most recent covers the best. Uh, I've just finished drawing Mikey for volume 24, so that's my current favorite. Yeah, I always keep it fresh. And, um, and uh, Jemmy asked, uh, according to you, what is the most difficult moments of the whole manga? Um, Wakui Sensei responded, for me, the most difficult thing is to respond to these interviews. Um, I, don't, <laughs> I don't have a very strong ego, nor I want to express my opinions. Uh, so I'm not very good at interviews and speeches and things like that. I don't know what to say to make people happy. Um, I think we have to, somebody has to buy Wakui Sensei a drink or something. <laughs> Uh, yeah, that was that was the uh, all the Q and A's this time around. Um, I want to thank Wakui Sensei for uh, taking the time to look at everybody's questions as well. Um, and uh, I hope to do these kind of events in um, in the future here at Kodansha Live on our um, Kodansha Manga YouTube channel. Um, and uh, today's episode uh, where I played um, the interview as well as a sketch video will be available on our YouTube channel um, later. <laughs> um, uh, probably by um, tomorrow, I will say. Um, so keep an eye out for uh, the new videos that gets uploaded onto our, um, our channel. Um, Let's see, let's take a look at what everybody else is saying on the chat. Okay, so the chat is super crazy today. Like, I'm super glad that um, all the fans of, um, you know, Tokyo Revengers showed up uh, to watch this with us today. Um, let's see what they're saying. Um, uh, Alia says, yeah, we Arabs are a big fan of Tokyo Revengers. Um, Akazan Snowflake says that looks cute about... Oh, this one is about the digital first. Uh, we're on our own from here. Uh, Zero, this is... Um, this art is so sick. The girl, the shovel, and the evil eyes. Yeah, I, I totally agree that um, the character designs um, in that series is like totally snapping. Uh, Mistas Popopo says, Takemichi, my boy! <laughs> Uh, Kony Lemon says, this is very interesting, thank you for this, oh, thank you very much. Uh, Cheka uh, said, me going to watch those movies after this. Oh, I think you're talking about um, the ones that Walker well, said are uh, his favorites. Uh, 23 Pixels, thank you for the interview, thank you for watching. Uh, Cheka says, Ken Wakui, you're 
doing great, absolutely. Uh, Anna, Christina, uh, Ar- Alvarez, we love you, Wakui, um, Yoloko, uh, Brain Rot, thank you, Misaki. Oh, me, <laughs> thank you very much. Uh, yeah, that was that was pretty crazy. I'm I'm very um happy to um hear really good feedbacks on these um interviews and I hope to do some more. Um speaking of uh next episode is uh going to be the Attack on Titan special. Yeah, that's right, Attack on Titan is coming back in a major way. So um I hope you tune into this one. It's gonna be um we're gonna be ramping up to the the climax, the the ultimate, the final conclusion of the manga, and uh, uh, we will be doing this together in um, collage style. So I hope you tune in. Um, there will be more information um, about the new episode coming up um, on our um, YouTube as well as social media. So please stay tuned. Or, um, you know, if you if we don't want to miss out, you can always subscribe to our channels to keep up to date with all our um, news and stuff. Yep, that's it. Ooh, okay, so I hope I will see you soon and have a good day. Peace out.